would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. My name is Robert Whitelaw, and I am the Rebel Broker. Licensed real estate broker in the state of California, member of the National Association of Real Tours. But please, don't hold that against me. Okay, welcome to another interview edition of Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. I am very excited to introduce today's guest. Uh, he's going to be able to share with us, I think, some pretty amazing insights uh, based on his experience to, to really get you guys going. I want to welcome Rod Cleef to the show. Rod, welcome to Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. Oh, happy to be here, Robert. You know, I was uh, taking a quick look at your background, and one of the things that's kind of an ongoing theme here on the show is finding the strength to push through, right? To, to do things that maybe aren't as conventional, that, that kind of break the mold. And that, that includes taking risks and being willing to embrace both sides of a risk, right? Risks can be great and have great reward, or they can maybe not result in some of the results you're shooting for. Your background, I think, fits into this idea very nicely. You want to share with the audience a little bit about oh, we you had, and we your had history? To go, we had to go to the pain right out of yes. the gate. Oh, let's didn't let's we, get Robert? the band-aid right. right off. All right. Well, let me let me let me start at the beginning because it really it really lends itself to this conversation. So I immigrated to this country when I was six years old. Um, didn't uh, speak English. Uh, ended up in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we didn't have much money at all. In fact, uh, my clothes friend came from the Goodwill, and we ate expired bread and drank powdered milk because that's all we could afford. And mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of people had it much worse than that, but I knew I wanted more. And I saw my mom babysit kids, and she used that money to buy the house across the street from from us. When I was 14 years old, she bought it. And when I was 17, she told me it had gone up twenty thousand dollars in value, and I'm like, "What?" So she made twenty grand not doing anything except buying that house, and I instantly knew I was getting into real estate. So, I know some of your listeners are real estate agents and brokers, and I got my broker's license when I turned eighteen, like wow. days after, days afterwards, because back then you could get your broker's license with just education; you didn't need the experience component. I think I even made the paper, if I recall, and and so I thought I was going to be rich in real estate, and uh, my first couple of years, I, <laughs> I think I made 10,000 my first year and 15,000 my second year. But then I met somebody that, that taught me about the psychology of success and, uh, and mindset. And I did really well my third year and really never looked back. But, um, I ended up, you know, fast forward to today, I've owned, uh, over 2000 houses that I've rented out long term. Uh, par uh, multiple apartment buildings that I've rented out. I've had some spectacular some success and some equally spectacular failures, which I call seminars. And <laughs> I think the one that, you re that you're referencing on my bio happened in 2008. So let me go back to, let's go back to 2006 first though. 2006, I had 800 houses and mul multiple apartment buildings here in Florida. And my net worth went up $17 million in 2006. Wow. And I, I thought I was a real estate god, <laughs> right. and and when you and when you when you know you act like that, God or the universe or whatever you believe will typically give you a smackdown, and my smackdown was 2008. Uh, I I crashed and burned, and for a lot of reasons, and you know, and that seminar, that 50 million dollar seminar. Um, was the reason I started my podcast actually, uh, and uh, my podcast is Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing, and and it's been a real joy. But really, to give the message to real estate investors that if if you're thinking about investing long term, I don't recommend single family. I mean, I can humbly say I've you know done done a lot of single family with mm -hmm. two thousand houses, multiple states, and I don't recommend it, and for a lot of reasons that we can go into, but. You know, the reason that I crashed and burned in Florida was I was focused on value instead of cash flow. And uh, cash flow is really, especially in this hot market, is really the bottom line. Value should be out the window if you're looking at buying property um, for a long-term hold yeah. to, to live on, to build an annuity. 
And uh, so, you know, that's that's the that's the short answer uh, on on my background. Uh, but um, you know, I love real estate. I'm actively buying multifamily right now, and you know, love talking real estate soup to nuts. So there you have it. Well, and you know, I one thing we've talked about, we've actually had the debate on the show a few times, single family residential versus multifamily. And from a math standpoint, if if you're looking for that return on investment, you know, multifamily is really hard to beat. So even independent of what you might want to discuss relating to marketplace geography, whatever, it makes it makes sense. One thing I'd ask is what do you think about it in terms of a strategy to insulate you against potential downturns in terms of uh, folks? It's, are, it's, and- yeah, no, got it. It's it's actually much, much safer to do multifamily with the upcoming contraction. I mean, guys, I, you know, if, if, if we are definitely heading into a contraction. In fact, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich mm-hmm. Dad, Poor Dad, was recently quoted as saying it's already started. You know, Harry Dent, an economist I follow, says it's already started. Says it's going to be a good one, too. Yeah. Now, I will, t- I will tell you that um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be buying. I mean, we're buying. We wrote an offer yesterday. We're writing another offer on Monday. But you need to be focused on cash flow. And the difference between single family and multifamily, I'm going to give you some quick high level differences. And from my experience, firstly, if you buy a single family uh, to hold long term and it's empty, you are 100 percent vacant. If you own if you own even a duplex, triplex or fourplex, if you've got a unit empty, chances are you're okay. Uh, in fact, a lot of people that I interview on my show started with a Plex, and some of them have, you know, built multi-million dollar portfolios, one duplex or triplex at a time. And it's a very safe way to start. So, for if any of your listeners are young and and success driven and passionate and want to get started in real estate investing, I'm going to say go buy a Plex. If 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 your spouse is okay with it, it's a fantastic way to start. Low, you know, low down payment, residential financing, um, you know, 30 year fixed financing. It's just a fantastic way to get into this business. But that being said, if you're going to if you're going to invest long term, what 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 cra- what caused me the most grief was I was spread out over a pretty big geographic area as well. Mm-hmm. To find the deals that I had to find to have 800 houses, I had to go about two hours north and two hours south of Sarasota along the coastline. Is that and, your philosophy, though? Do you like to stick within a driving radius of your properties? Um, I suggest that to people that are getting started. No, I, I, I'm actively I'm actively pursuing properties in the whole southeastern half of the United States. Okay. Uh, I've got, you know, eight virtual assistants in the Philippines honing a mailing list and, you know, on and on and on. Uh, and we're doing the whole eastern half of the United States. But that said, for new people, absolutely. I tell them there's four places that you should consider investing in first. First being your backyard. And your backyard can really be a two-hour drive, okay? Second would be somewhere you've lived or spent time, maybe went to school. Third would be Somewhere you've got boots on the ground. You've got family or friends that you could call and say, hey, go check on this for me. And the fourth would be somewhere you either love to visit or would even consider retiring. Those are the four markets I talk about in my book. And since I mentioned my book, I'll just tell you, I'll give it to your listeners for free. I I wrote this 200-page book. It's titled How to Create Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate. It's actually through multifamily properties. And uh, it's no fluff. It's 200 pages, how to find an area, how to evaluate an area, how to, you know, find a deal, how to talk to sellers, how to talk to brokers, how to talk to lenders, how to uh, man- even how to manage the property, how to finance it, how to how to find, uh, you know, how to do a syndication. It's all in there. And uh, I'll give it to your listeners for free. All they have to do is text the word ROD, R-O-D to 41411 and we'll send it to you. It's going to go on Amazon for 24.95 here in a couple of weeks. Um but they can get it for free if they if they text Rod to 41411. So Well, that's awesome. But, and you know what? I'll also just for those in the audience listening, we'll mention this again at the end of the show, but I'll also put it in the show notes for today's show so everybody can get access to it. I really appreciate that, Rod. 
Oh, absolutely, my pleasure. Yeah, um, I had rave. I've had rave reviews on it. So, so anyway, those those you know that's my advice as far as where you invest. But again, if you're thinking lot now, now if you want to flip houses, if you want to wholesale houses or even wholesale multifamily, you know, I I've got a friend that wholesaled a, a, a an apartment building and made a hundred thousand uh, dollars, you know, in about four days. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's a great way to make quick cash. But that flipping wholesaling or even being a sales agent or a broker, it's a job. I yeah. mean, every January 1st, you go back to work. So those of you that are listening that are in the real estate business in a broker or agent capacity, I mean, you are in the catbird seat to find deals for yourself and build you know, annuities, build cash flow, buy property to hold on to. So I hope if you're in that field that you're listening and that you take advantage of you know, the fact that you're in the – you know, you're perfectly positioned to capitalize on deals that you come across. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, because otherwise, you know, there, uh, regretfully in the in the in the real estate business as an agent or a broker, most organizations don't have a retirement plan. And I know Social Security doesn't pay very well. So, you know, my advice is is buy some multifamily real estate or, or you know, some other sector that cash flows well. But uh Again, my, my advice is, is to avoid single family for long term. So and it what, also sounds like you're embracing a philosophy we've talked about here. We, we call it ground truth uh, on the show in terms of where you choose to invest. So I think that that's it's good to hear someone out there who's who's getting it done, who is embracing this idea of, you know, be be hands on with it to the point where, you know, the areas that you're buying and you've gotten enough information to make those good decisions. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's even deeper than that. Um, you know, if if you're considering an area, for example, one of the four that I just mentioned, mm-hmm. um, you know what's so fantastic is 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 I mean, you and I are much older than 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 you know a lot maybe a lot of the people listening, but you guys that are listening, you've got such incredible resources with the on your laptop. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I put a property under contract before I've even seen it. <clears throat> I won't even go fly somewhere to go see it unless I have it under contract because I can check the demographics. I can go on bestplaces.net and see, you know, and confirm that population income and employment are growing. I can go on spot crime and make sure it's not in the hood. I can go on Google Earth and drive down the street and, you know, go down to the main intersection. And if there's a pawn shop and a liquor store and a strip club on yeah. the corner, I know that's a problem. <laughs> right, you know? right. So, 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 you know, all of this you can do from your laptop and, uh, you know, you can do your financial analysis and, so, I mean, we've got such incredible resources at our fingertips anymore. Uh, you know, it's really a blessing. So, um, uh, anyway, I got off on a sidetrack there. No, but- no, no. I, that's a good track. I mean, I think a lot of people benefit from from some of those those basics. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the amazing wealth of information that's available on the internet. How much analysis you can do just from your desk in terms of being able oh, to yeah. find out all the things that you've just described. Um, right. <clears throat> and even the idea of if if you get that level of confidence where you feel good about doing it, going ahead and making that offer, realizing you've got a window of opportunity to analyze it. That's that's what the sure, inspection sure. period is so for. That's to, what the, the due diligence period, absolutely. Right. You, you typically have thirty days, and and so uh, and and then just the important thing to remember when you go into the due diligence phase. You know, you're all excited up to that point, especially in this hot market. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to find a deal and you're hungry and you finally get one under contract. It checked off all the boxes. You know, I'm talking commercial now, mostly that's, that's my, that's my wheelhouse now. Mm -hmm. Commercial meaning multifamily. Actually, let me just, let me back up for a second. Um, In multifamily, two to four units is residential, which is, which has some advantages and disadvantages as it relates to. Uh, increasing the value. Uh, the, the the value is, is based on comparable sales, but five plus units is commercial multifamily. Right. And, um, and so, and I, so I completely lost my train of thought. Where I was going with that. <laughs> it's never pretty when you lose your mind. So um, anyway, no, I, I uh, yeah, no, just kind I of pointing out that difference, right? Because there are, the, even from a standpoint of what kind of disclosures you're going to get, what your expectations can be as a buyer. Oh, that, no, I remember what it was. It was the due diligence. So when you get a property under contract and you've spent all this time, especially in this hot market, to find it, mm-hmm. once you've got it under contract, you have to put the hat on that says, why do I not want to do this deal? And it's a real mindset shift. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, I'll give you an example. On my acquisitions team, I've got James. James is very, very hungry. He's young. 
Uh, he takes the initial calls from sellers from our marketing efforts, and if the phone's busy, it comes to me. But, but you know, he's he gets equity and he's incentivized to do these deals. And you know, you could equate him to a dog with slobber dripping from his mouth. You know, <laughs> and then I've got Robert. Robert's my CFO, and Robert does the preliminary due diligence. And Robert's standing next to James with a bucket of cold water that he regularly throws on James. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and that and 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 if you're buying, you have to wear both those hats. So it's just very, very important, uh, you know, to 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 check your numbers, check your demographics, you know, check off all the boxes. Now, don't get caught in analysis paralysis. If the boxes get checked off and you've got the money to do the deal, then pull the trigger. Yeah. But, but you know, in this hot market, both eyes wide open. You know, carefully pushing forward. Yeah. Well, and you know, you hit on a couple of interesting points there. One having a good team, right? And just just because you're not at that I have 50 million in real estate point doesn't mean don't start working on your on your team right now. Your team could simply be the real estate agent you're cooperating with. Uh, maybe you're going for uh, in, in, partnering with people for investment purposes, whatever it might be, whatever need absolutely. is there. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, uh, finding a local lender, local banker, developing relationships, of course, with the broker. Brokers can make you wealthy. Developing relationships with local banks. I interviewed a kid on my show in Michigan that that uh, bought a million dollar property with bank financing for five thousand dollars down because he had a great relationship with the banker, and the banker allowed the seller to carry a second. I mean, you know, that's the value of these relationships. And guys, those of you listening that are thinking about real estate as a business, it is a relationship business. Yeah. So, you know, you got you got to get out there and 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 meet people and develop deep relationships, including with brokers, and be respectful of brokers. You know, uh, be respectful uh, respectful of their time and realize they don't get paid unless a deal closes. So, you know, don't waste their time. Um, and, and I always tell my students, you know, be, res- be respectful, be responsive. If you get a deal from a broker, cause you asked for deals, you know, tell them why it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, don't be a black hole. Yeah. Um, you know, well, the more and, you communicate, uh, the better odds your, the next deal will be right. You know, if, if right. And, and the better chance you'll have of getting that deal before it goes out on the public market, yeah. you have a chance of at an off market deal, which are the best deals in this hot market. And it's, it's all relationship driven. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break for a second. But when we come back, we've talked a little bit about teams. What I'd love to do is have you share with the audience a little bit about the own personal mindset. Once you, once you kind of turn everything inward, what's the mindset for real estate? So that'll be fun. Great. We'll cover that in just a second. So don't go away. Are you ready to jump in and start your search for your first investment property? Maybe you've decided that it's time to own your own home, or maybe you're ready to sell your home and move on to something new. No matter what your goal is, the Rebel Broker can help. That's right. Aside from hosting this show, I am also the owner broker of White Lawn Sons Real Estate Services right here in Silicon Valley. With over 25 years experience serving Silicon Valley, Morgan Hill, San Martin, and Gilroy, I or one of my great agents can help you achieve your goals in real estate. So if you're ready to look into taking that next step towards achieving your real estate goals, point your browser at www.soldbyrobert.com. That's www.soldbyrobert.com robert.com and get in touch. Let me show you how I will earn your business and your respect. Again, that's www.soldbyrobert.com or you can call me at 408-852-0525, California Bureau of Real Estate ID 00984909. Everyone, we are having a chat with Rod Cleef, real estate investor, entrepreneur, uh, I don't know what what would you say. I don't want to use the word phoenix because that's so overused. But a guy who's crashed and burned and recovered uh, in terms of his real estate more career. than once, <laughs> more than once, I might add, Rat- rags to riches to rags to riches. And I'll tell that story. Actually, I, I, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I haven't I haven't said that out loud in a long time. But that's <laughs> that's really what happened to me. So so let me let me go back because I think part of this story will really help and resonate with those of you that haven't taken action on your dreams yet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, let me, let me talk about how I used my goals and my, my visualizations to get what I wanted in life. And now, now please understand that all I can do is give you examples that I've used in my own life. And, you know, it's not, it's not me bragging. It's just, that's all I can use. But, but, before I actually even get into the visualization, I want to talk about goal setting for just a second, because those of you listening, if you haven't 
written your goals down, literally written them down. I don't mean have them in your head, written them down. You are making a huge mistake. And I, I take my coaching clients through this goal setting workshop. And if you'll humor me for a minute, Robert, let you me take two mi minutes. Let me describe it um, so I can add value to your listeners. So here's what I want you guys to do. Pick a time when you've got a lot of energy and and, and this, this is going to take you about an hour, even you analytical ones. It'll take you about an hour. But, but, but carve out the time when you have a lot of energy, if that's morning or evening for you. Make sure you're hydrated. And then sit down and write down everything you could ever possibly want in life. Write down the big things, the little things. Take the lid off your brain. Pretend, imagine that if you write it down, you're going to get it which is not outside the realm of possibility. So write down, you know, who you want, who you want to become, what you want to learn, who you want to help. You know, I bought my parents a house. I, you know, bought them a car. What, who do you want to do things for? Write all that down, write down. Um, you know, I want to learn how to fly helicopters, write down what you want to learn. Um, you know, and, and don't, don't stop writing. If you're analytical, don't analyze, just write it down. You can always scratch it off later and just keep writing even the big things. Um, you know, it's, it's regretful that people take more time planning Christmas than they do designing their lives. Yeah. And so do this guys and, and take the lid off your brain because you know, it's just a decision. Everything you want is just a decision. So once you're done writing your complete list of goals, then take a minute and write down why those, I'm sorry, take a minute and write down how long it's going to take you to achieve each goal. Put a number by each goal, a number of years, one year, three year, five year, 10 year, 20 year. Remembering that we, as human beings, we'll overestimate what we can do in a year and grossly underestimate what we can do in five or 10 years. So write down uh, a number by each goal. And guys, what this does by writing these goals down, it, it triggers something called your reticular activating system. It's this system in our brains that filters out all the millions of things that we're experiencing throughout the day. Like right now, you're not thinking about how your feet feel. But when I mention it, you're thinking about your feet. And this is the thing, this is the thing that, you know, when you first buy a car, you never really noticed them before, but then you buy the car and you see them everywhere. That's your reticular activating system. And that's why it's so powerful to write your goals down. But anyway, back to the back to the exercise. So you've written your goals and you've written down a time limit uh, by each goal. Now go and circle your top four one-year goals. Okay, pick four of them, write them on a separate sheet of paper, and write down a paragraph why each one of those goals is an absolute must. And I'm almost done here, but but write down a paragraph, and you must do this because the goal itself will never drive you. The why will drive you, okay? And 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 use emotionally charged words so that, uh, you know, my, my wife is proud, my husband is proud, my family is proud, you know, so I feel like a success, so I can live the life I've always dreamed. Whatever works for you, whatever is going to drive you, write it down. But do one last little piece on there, and that is put some pain in. If you don't achieve it, write down how you're going to feel and, and make it painful because as human beings, we'll do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. So, you know, so I don't feel like a failure. So I didn't fail my family. So I, you know, I don't live a life of regret, whatever, make it painful. And then once you've got the whys written, want, do the last step. And the last step is get, go on Google and get pictures that resonate with you associated with those goals, okay? Go on Google, find some pictures, download them, go to Walgreens or CVS. You can have them blown up into, you know, 16 by 24 prints on stiff paper for like 8 to 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Put them where you see them because in this business, real estate, or any business for that matter, you have to have the oomph to take action initially, and then you have to have the, the, uh, the mindset – and the ability to get back up when you get knocked down because you're going to get your nose bloodied. You're going to get knocked down. It's a, it's just how the world works. And you have to remember why you're doing what you're doing so you get back up and keep going, which is what I had to do in 2008 when I lost $50 million. And, you know, I thought I was set for life. Yeah. And, you know, it's a painful seminar. And, I mean, I'm back now. But but I can tell you, if I didn't do what I'm describing here um, – you know, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, who knows where I'd be right now. Yeah. But so, so let me talk to you about visualization now because it ties into this. So back when I was 18, I was a broker and you guys, many of you can relate listening. So I had a four door Granada, Ford, four door Granada is the ugliest thing you've ever seen. And, <laughs> and, and if you work for Ford, I'm sorry, but you know, it was ugly too. So anyway, so I had this four door Granada and I, I had a friend that had a Corvette. And man, I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So I got a 
picture out of a magazine. Yeah. I actually had to use magazines back then. And I, I put it in the visor of that, of that Granada. And I didn't even know what I was doing at the time. Now the movie, the secrets come out and the law of attraction, all that stuff. And now I look back and I know now what I was doing. But so I, I had a Corvette within a year by having that on the visor of my Granada. Then on that Corvette, I, I, I was watching Magnum PI. Tom Selleck was the actor and he had this Ferrari 308. You remember it, right, Robert? A yeah, beautiful I do. red Ferrari. I got a picture of that actual Ferrari and put it on the visor of my Corvette. And again, guys, this is not me bragging. This is just me sharing the power of visualization. Again, I didn't even know it was what that's what I was doing at the time. Right. But put a picture of that Ferrari on there. And within a couple of years, I had a Maserati that looked just like that Ferrari. So so then the last example is I always wanted a Lamborghini. And I'm the guy that had the posters in his bedroom with the bikini girls uh-huh. washing the you know, I'm that guy. I had that. I had, you know, and, and what's what's really interesting is my son collected. He was nine years old. And he collected models of exotic cars and he had a model of the exact same color uh, and style Lamborghini that I ended up uh, getting, which I ultimately wrecked. But that's we won't go there. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, so so this stuff works, guys. In fact, one last example. I've got a I've got a planner. I, I use a paper planner. Yes, I'm one of these dinosaurs that that still uses a paper planner, and it's it was called a day timer. Now it's I think Franklin Covey, and in the back of this thing, I've got uh, pictures that I've had in here for literally almost 20 years. Okay, and the first few and they're in plastic. They're all dog-eared, but but the first few pictures are my gratitude pictures. They're my kids, things I'm I'm grateful for because yeah. everything comes from a place of gratitude. But then after that, I've got the the watches. I've got tons of watches. I'm getting these things don't motivate me anymore. I, the, the Lamborghini picture before I ever got one, the Rolls Royce, all these things, the houses on the on the beach that I wanted, all these things that I got that that I got because I visualized them and I and I and I made them happen with pictures. So those of you listening to what more out of life, I just gave you the secret. And it truly is. I know it may sound foofy to some of you, but I promise you that what I just told you is 80% of it. Okay. 20% is the real estate stuff. 80% is your psychology and your mindset, which is one of the reasons on my podcast, I have these, um, you know, little five minute, uh, eight, five to eight minute clips every week called your driving force success tips, where I talk about the psychology of success because it really is 80 or 90% of it. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's the ability to take action and it's the ability to get back up when you get knocked down. And so anyway, um, Last example, because it, it ties into something else. I always wanted a house on the beach. And I mean, I, I'm, I lived in Denver and there's no beach there. There's no right. palm trees there. I always wanted a house on the beach. And I built, I finally, and finally achieved it. I built this, uh, you know, incredible 10,000 square foot, $8 million testament to my ego on the beach here in Sarasota. <laughs> and, and, um, but, but, but I want to share one last thing, cause this is relates to goal setting and, um, uh, and success in general. So I'm floating in the pool of this, of this incredible house. I mean, waterfall from the second floor into the pool. I mean, the pool was in magazines. I mean, this, this house was extraordinary. It was a beach on one side, bay on the other side. I'm just a spectacular home, but I'm floating in this pool. And, um, I look up at this house and I'm depressed and I'm like, what the hell? I achieved this goal. I should be proud. I should be excited. Mm -hmm. And I was depressed and I didn't know it at the time. But when I, when I, now I know I've, you know, I, I started self-actualizing. I did a bunch of Tony Robbins stuff. I spent 16 years following him around the planet and actually worked with him for a while. And uh, life changing. If you guys ever have a chance to see Tony and you don't, you're making a huge mistake. Yeah. But, but that said, I, I, um, at the time I was depressed for two reasons. One was, and this relates to goal setting guys never achieve a big goal unless you have other goals lined up. Because without a vision, the people perish. Like the good book says, you need a vision for your future. And that was the one mistake I made. But the bigger mistake um, was I was successful, but I was unfulfilled. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was, in fact, I would, I would be, uh, I'd be, you know, honest if I was saying I was, I was actually probably narcissistic. I was all about rod, 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 making Mm -hmm. money, success, success, prove to the world I'm good enough, you know, and And, uh, you know, luckily I got exposed to Tony and Tony talks about feeding people. And so I decided this was 2000. I decided to go out and feed five families with my brother for the holidays. We went and bought food and we, uh, packed up baskets of food and we delivered them to five families. 
and the third family changed my life. Uh, we delivered the food to this lady. It was right before Thanksgiving. Big, t- We had turkey, frozen turkeys, and uh, she came out. She started crying when she saw the food. Her five kids came out. Most of them started crying when they saw the food. I started crying, and I was hooked. And so since then, I, the next year, I, I did 50 families. The year after that, 100 families, and I paid for this. And the next year was 200, then 400, then 800, then 1,600. And then the crash happened, and so then I started taking donations uh, for it. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to say that we've fed 50,000 children over the last 17 years. Uh, we've done thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies over the last several years. We've done thousands of teddy bears um, to the local police departments to, for the officers to have in their cars when they encounter a child that's experienced a traumatic event. And that has been the greatest joy in my life. So the message here, guys, is you don't have to do anything of that magnitude, but don't just be focused on success. There's a big difference between success and being fulfilled and happy. I know a lot of very, very successful people that are unfulfilled, even billionaires that are unfulfilled because they're focused on themselves. And and so, uh, you know, and, and this doesn't mean you have to do something big, but you need to give back in some fashion. And I don't care if you just buy the person behind you and at Starbucks a cup of coffee, you pay for the person in the toll booth behind you, or you just decide to smile at everybody today. That's what life's about. Yeah, you know, I this was one of the things I absolutely wanted to make sure and hit during our chat because you know, over the years, I've encountered an awful lot of folks from all different walks of life, folks who are super successful real estate investors and folks who are, who are getting things done and are by all the external measurable metrics successful, right? Whether you're measuring it by income or by properties they own or by whatever. Um, and I've seen both sides. I've seen the person who is successful, but is miserable, uh, yeah. because Tony they Robbins, don't have that Tony balance. Robbins talks about it. He talks about, you know, uh, the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment and fulfillment really is an art. And, and it's, and it's almost always giving back beyond yourself and it can be pets. It can be old people. It can be children like I've embraced. It can be, you know, it can be anything, uh, just, just your family for that matter. It doesn't matter, but it's, it's about giving. It's about, and, 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 you know, anything in this world, if you give it, you'll receive it, be it love, be it happiness, be it, you know, uh, money. Uh, and, and, you know, you that old dynamic, you get back what you give tenfold. Yeah. I, I'm here to tell you guys, I promise you it's the truth. Yeah. The most successful, wealthy people on the planet for the majority of them give more than they, than they take. And, yeah. and in fact, I just did a clip on giving versus taking and, and, you know, that, and, and it's absolutely the truth. So there you have it. Yeah. And I think that what's, what's also, I think a, a healthy way to go in terms of sort of tying what you've been talking about together is when you're doing that visualization and you're, and you're putting that stimuli out in front of you to help direct you in, into success, it's just as valuable to have next to the, to the picture of the Corvette, you know, that picture of the happy family or, or the, the, the less tangible thing, right? The thing the, yeah, no, the image no, no that question. invokes that. Yeah, I, I will tell you, I, I just did a Facebook Live episode on doing a vision board, and I have about 10 vision boards. I've got one that has all the stuff on it. It's got the giving back, the gratitude, the, the material things, all that stuff. You know, it's, it's about eight years old. But then I got, I've got individual boards now. I've got a board for building uh, self-sustaining schools in Latin America. I've got a board for helping uh, children with cancer. I've got a board for... You know, the material things. I, I, I want to fly privately one day. That's my mm-hmm. that's my big bucket list goal is to have a jet. Yeah. Um, but but, you know, and then I, I've got I've got, um, you know, my travel board, the places I've been that I love and want to go back and the places I haven't been that I that, that I have to go see. So, you know, that stuff works, guys. I mean, it's worked in my life. That's all I can tell you. Uh, so I know that it works. Uh, I mean, like and maybe you've heard the story of Jim Carrey when he had nothing, wrote himself a check for 10 million dollars. And just looked at it when he had nothing. It was it was tattered. But ten years later, he he cashed a, a check for ten million dollars for his first big movie, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and so, you know, it's it it really visualization is very very powerful. It's I and it's a com- it's a power of commitment thing too, right? He decided yeah. I'm this is going to happen. 
right? Yeah, and it, no, and no this question. is the material thing that tells me the thing that doesn't exist yet. This is proof that I'm going to make it exist. Yeah. I mean, they train this to, to, to the Olympic athletes. They have them visualize the race because it, it enhances it so much. You know, I, I, I remember reading a story about Roy Disney when they opened Epcot center and Walt had already passed and, and a reporter came up to Roy and said, you know, it's a shame Walt didn't see this. And Roy looked at him with a strange look and said, the only reason you're seeing this is because Walt saw this yeah. you know, in his head. And, and imagination and visualization, I mean, it's, it's incredibly powerful. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why I enjoy I, – I, and it's, you know, it's, just, it's just served me so well. I mean, I really believe that if you, if you really write the goals down, you write down the whys, you focus on them um, – like, for example, I have a little morning ritual. Um, it just literally takes me five minutes. And, guys, you can do this, and I can tell you it's very, very powerful. There's a great book on a version of this called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, which mm-hmm. I highly recommend. I give it to my students. But but uh, on a much smaller scale, just get up. Be grateful. Close your eyes. Be grateful for just a couple minutes. Be gra- I'm, I'm grateful for my wife, my children, and you know, and, and just be grateful. And then I'm grateful for the things that I want as if I already have them. And I, and I th- I'm like, thank you for that, and like as if I already have it. I, I know that sounds foofy to some of you, but I'm telling you it works, yeah. okay? And, and, then, and then I just make a declaration that it's going to be a great day, and it usually is. Yeah. Now, you've been very generous with your time, but I've got one more thing I wanted to hit bef- oh. before we let you go. One of the most paralyzing things I think for folks that stands between where they are and where they want to be is fear. Sure. Uh, what you know? What? No, 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 what are first steps that. for you? What would you suggest for someone no, as first steps? A- absolutely, all of us, all of us have adolescent. Well, not all of us. Most of us have adolescent limiting beliefs that hit us. Like for me, I'll tell you. I, I'll just be honest. I I was on a playground. I was nine years old. And I thought I was in love. Her name was Carolyn. And I, I just thought she was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. I never even talked to her. But all, one day she must have found out because she's, she walks across the playground, what seemed like half the school behind her. And I'm sure it was probably just about 10 kids, but it <laughs> felt like bigger than that. But, but, and she came up to me. She said, do you like mustard? And I was just happy she was talking to me. So, and the first time I actually even looked at her in the face and I said, yeah, I like mustard. She goes, well, I hate mustard and I hate you. And turned around, <laughs> walked away and all the kids laughed just like you did. You, you rotten SOB. <laughs> <laughs> happy to feel it, your nightmares. Sorry about yes, that. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, I was devastated. And, but what was interesting, and I didn't discover this till later, but as a result of that, I created a question and many people do this, a question or a phrase. And my question was, how can I show them I'm good enough? Yeah. And I will tell you, that question caused me to be a huge success, but it also cost me my first family, my, my wife, my, and it caused me to be more focused on success than always being there with my children. I was always there physically, played with them every night, but I wasn't, I was distracted. I wasn't there totally present, totally, you know, and, and, you know, and, and so I tell you, a lot of people have these adolescent limiting beliefs, but if you take a look and, you know, like Socrates says, a life unexamined is a life not worth living. Take a look at yourself and see if you have some of these and shine your adult spotlight on these adolescent belief systems. And there's a reason belief systems, the acronym is BS, OK, <laughs> right. because they are BS. Shine your adult spotlight on them and burn them up because 99.99% of them have no basis. In fact, they're BS. Yeah. And and when you realize that and realize that action builds confidence. For those of you that haven't taken action, action actually builds confidence. So just do something, even if it's a small thing. If you don't want to start with an apartment building, start with a duplex. It's, it's easy. It's, 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 it's less intimidating, less chance for a big mistake. And, you know, read my book. It'll, if you're interested in investing at all, because it truly is a textbook for it. And, and, but get out there and do it. Don't just think about it. If you're analytical, don't get caught in analysis paralysis. Get outside your comfort zone because your life, you, the quality of it, depends on how w- willing you are to become uncomfortable. So go get uncomfortable. Absolutely. And don't everyone remember that Rod has offered his book for you for free as a download. 
Yep. Uh, there'll be instructions in the show notes on how to do that. But also, before we let you go, maybe uh, one last time, let everyone know how to get a hold of your book and yeah, sure. how the else can is, everyone get in contact with you? What are your other online things that you'd like sure, folks to know about? Sure. No, thank you. Uh, the book is just text ROD, R-O-D, to 41411, and we'll get, get it right to you. Or you can just go directly to my website. Now, my website has a ton of of valuable content. It's got a lot of, you know, clips about the psychology of success, a lot of real estate training, and it's all free. And it's rodcleef.com, K-H-L-E, excuse me, K-H-L-E-I-F.com. I also just created an incredible online community on Facebook literally last week. I can't believe I almost forgot to mention it. Go to uh, multifamilycommunity.com, and it's a direct link to this Facebook page. Yeah, we have to approve you, but I, I, it's going to be loaded because I'm putting it out on my podcast on Monday, and it's going to be all you know, aspiring multifamily investors. A lot of my expert guests from the show will be there. I mean, you're going to be in great company to learn, peer mentor, grow. Um, so uh, again, that's multifamilycommunity.com to to go to that Facebook page, and. Uh, I'm on fa- I'm all over face. I'm all over uh, social media. I'd love to connect with you guys uh, if uh, you know. And I, I I respond to just about every question or comment. So uh, very very active, especially on Facebook. All right, excellent. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing your time so generously. Um, for those Pleasure. of the audience, as always, we want to deliver more in terms of just great information that helps you get started in real estate, persist in real estate and succeed in real estate. I think we've managed to do that today. Thanks again for listening. And I'll talk to you all next time.